I'm Dr. Nancy Schweitzer from the University of Arizona. I'm here to talk about the, one of the late-breaking trials announced on Sunday at the ESC meetings, CASEL AF. CASEL AF was a trial of almost uh, 350 patients, all of whom had heart failure and reduced left ventricular ejection fraction and symptomatic paroxysmal or permanent atrial fibrillation. It was a trial of uh, ablation versus standard therapy for the atrial fibrillation with a recommendation for rhythm control rather than rate control. I was really impressed when I saw the results of this trial and I think it might change my practice. The trial enrolled approximately 170 patients in each arm. They were fairly typical heart failure patients. They had atrial fibrillation. 70% um, of them had permanent atrial fibrillation and about 30% uh, of them had long-standing permanent atrial fibrillation. The patients um, had either failed antiarrhythmic therapy with a single drug or were refusing to take antiarrhythmic therapy. Uh, the uh, patients were both New York Heart Association Class 2 as well as New York Heart Association Class 3. They weren't severely symptomatic. Ablation was performed as a standard pulmonary vein ablation uh, with additional burning uh, at the discretion of the operator. The things that impressed me with this trial were twofold. One was that the rate of uh, maintenance of sinus rhythm in the ablation group was really impressively high for a heart failure trial. They looked out to 60 months and had persistent maintenance of sinus rhythm in over 50% of patients at 60 months which I think is a really good result in a heart failure cohort. In addition, uh, the trial showed a very impressive difference on all endpoints looked at. The, prior, the primary endpoint of the trial was a combined endpoint of survival and heart failure hospitalization. And that was uh, very significantly improved in the ablation group with a p-value much less than 0.01. The independent components of the primary endpoint were also statistically significant and in fact the trial showed a survival benefit in the patients who were randomized to the ablation arm. Uh, this was uh, highly statistically significant uh, and evident um, only a few years into the trial. All other endpoints they looked at were significantly improved, heart failure hospitalization, all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, all in the direction favoring the ablation group. Also of interest, despite the urging on the part of the trial leadership to maintain sinus rhythm in patients, the vast majority of the non-ablation arm were maintained in atrial fibrillation throughout the trial. So maintenance of sinus rhythm is difficult. Uh, most of the patients uh, were on amiodarone, as you would predict. Obviously, ablation is an invasive procedure and there are complications associated with the procedure and um, the data about this were also impressive. Uh, the complication rate in this trial was very low, which is, I think, a testament to the highly experienced operators uh, chosen to be in the trial. Uh, but the stroke rate was double um, in the conventionally treated arm than the ablation arm. Um, and that was, I think, important. There were almost uh, over 12% of patients in the conventionally treated arm suffered strokes. So in summary, I think CASEL AF is a really impactful trial, taking patients with atrial fibrillation and heart failure and demonstrating an all-cause mortality and uh, hospitalization benefit in ablation compared to conventional management of atrial fibrillation in a cohort with an average ejection fraction of 30%, a large number of whom had long-standing permanent atrial fibrillation. This may well change my practice. If you have a good atrial ablationist at your um, institution, I would certainly have a discussion with that person about how you may change the threshold for referral for atrial fibrillation ablation in your heart failure patients.